Okay, some people wanted to see how I uh, secured this um, oversized uh, structure. And normally I don't like doing this because uh, there's always a sofa expert who knows best. Oh, you should have done this. Oh, no, that's not how you do it, you know. Which is um, kind of like, you know, discourages people to show how you secure loads because this is a sensitive, uh, you open yourself to... Uh, critique not always deserved and one uh, note i wanted to make here is that i'm in cambridge ontario about four hours away from the place where i picked this up so this thing is 12 feet wide so i drove for four hours and the way i secured this i was uh, checking my chains of course every time i st i i, I stopped and it did move an inch so the securement works i only have one hour to go to my destination tomorrow because there was a crane appointment i was here like real early maybe you know before lunch today but the crane is only coming tomorrow so i have to wait so but anyway what i'm trying to say is that i did i covered a lot of miles um, already and the load is still in my trailer and when I entered Ontario uh, through Windsor you know from Detroit to Windsor um, the scale was open east of Windsor and they checked my logbook they checked my uh, annual Ontario permit overweight oversized permit they check all my flags they check my chains and then they said have a have a good day sir you all set so whatever you see now whatever you will see in a second is how it's supposed to be secured and i don't care about any uh, critics this is how i do it and this is what mto ministry of transportation of ontario was okay with okay so first of all the weight of this thing is not 37,000 pounds as I, I was originally told because it's not some of these are made out of uh, concrete so it's only 20,000 pounds so because it's kind of flimsy you cannot put any straps over and plus it's 10 feet tall so so 10 12 across 10 and you need pretty long straps uh, I didn't have that I, mine are only like 30 feet but always ask I always ask the shipper like what's the best way to secure uh, so that not to damage the the load and usually they will tell you because lots of these people know and the guy says you gotta use this and that's how the um, that's where the crane straps you saw in the video were hooked up they use the same shackles just theirs were a bit wider but the same uh, WLL I even checked was like eight and a half tons and because there's a hole in there and that's the only place where you can hook up anything there's just two on each side so four total and another thing tricky about this and you see it sticks out about two feet on each side so it was actually pretty stressful uh, pulling this so I made sure I, I, I have flags like you know clearly marked all these spots and I had my see I did like this I love using these uh, <laughs> cables and of course I had my light flashing light in the back flashing light in the front but here's something interesting I had to do because the floor on this thing it's not solid there's like beams you know just kind of like on my trailer there's beams going across like this like this and between them uh, you saw that flimsy uh, sheets of whatever like it's basically it's nothing so once they screwed it on you cannot see where the beams are so because of that you know originally i wanted to put these uh, boards across and then i realized that I, I i i wouldn't be able to to figure out where the beams are and the shipper says hey why don't we put them you know alongside and i say hey that's a great idea and so that's what we did but of course why i had to use them because they were over here and they would have been in the way so i had to take them out of there and where do i put them you know i didn't want to they're too heavy of course i could have put them somewhere here but basically you don't need to use them but this was i measured 
of course with a load like this it's always a good idea you know measure from the ground to the top so I measured it was 13.2 even with these boards so normally yeah I don't like running in this position because when you load it then the front sits too low like over here so that's why I try to use the medium position you see that here's my hand with like two hands two palms what is it I don't know eight inches you know so so I measured over there in the middle because the and I made sure that there's nothing on the top I asked the crane guy because he was sitting over there uh, sitting in his machine and said can you see the top is it flat he said yeah and then of course you gotta know that like I measured here was 11 feet 10 inches and I wondered why did it tell me 12 3 and then I noticed these things that stick out so it was real trick you know going through customs jeez I was afraid I would hit the, the booth and the guy was really nervous as I was passing even though I was going through a, a you know wide load uh, designated lane but anyway so you put the shaker like this right and then of course normally the way they want you to secure is to go uh, at the nearest distance from the load to the trailer that's what all manuals say you know that's the strongest tie down so ideally ideally you would want to be somewhere here because that's the closest chain you would use right but lots of guys still prefer to have like an angle and the problem with that is like when you have an angle like this like big one if one chain gets loose then all others can get loose too right so when you use a very short chain it's more secure and that's how you know uh, DOT for example manual says uh, use the shortest distance from the load to the to the trailer so what happened here is that of course you can go this way so I have two chains on the pulling this way and then in the back there's a chain pulling the other way right and that's of course for me I don't like this that's too far so the angle is too steep you know but there was no there was no uh, way out for me you know I, I tried this one before like just uh, you know right under here the second one but it's too short my binder couldn't didn't have enough room to sit too tight like I I tightened it to the maximum and the chain was still loose when it was over there so I had to do it like this you know so this is my half an inch chain so 11,300 pounds WLL for the pair so 11 times 2 22.6 so whatever I have secured securement devices here this is good for 44,000 pound load okay so don't give me any flack please and then of course I made sure that this was not hanging loose you know touching the ground and these were out of the way but yeah so basically that, that's the, the thing right so the binder here's the hook going into the shackle over there uh, hook is latched onto the onto the chain using the d-ring and you basically you just you work with what you have right so like I said ideally I would go somewhere close but again um, because of the weird uh, position of these of these things you know you gotta you gotta find what works and like I said I was shaking them every couple of hours every time I stopped not a single time was any chain loose because you know it's 20,000 pounds I have four chains on it half an inch chains and then of course what else was interesting here yeah so no straps just chains and uh, you don't want to damage anything so I always ask the shipper what the advice is on, on positioning we yeah, have the same thing here just uh, shackles and chain to the D-ring and that's it four of these and they bolted the door yeah on the other side I think stay back radio frequency energy <gasps> my god see what I have to deal with here and yeah and I put flags of course on each uh, corner but in the back like here they had this little you know hole which was perfect what <laughs> oh there's a 
nail in there my flag caught in the nail so like this thing is very old so it's a good thing that we have boards like this actually I like it better and this is it that's how you secure uh, uh, radio frequency energy uh, rich structure so stay tuned don't give me any flag Thanks for watching.